What is going on guys? Hey, it's Robert Greenblatt here with another real estate story. So the moral of this one, stay tuned for this, is if it smells fishy, it probably is. Please do me a favor, click that subscribe button and that like button. It'll really help me grow this channel. Here we go. Here's the story. So I recently got a phone call from a gentleman who was referred to me through a referral service. Pretty common in this industry. And he proceeded to tell me he had a home to sell. I said, great. It was his mom's home. Great. Mom is in uh, some type of facility, assisted living or similar. But he said that he had power of attorney. I said, awesome. I said, we can document everything. Not a problem. We do this all the time. Power of attorney, no problem. And he said that mom is in the process of going on Medicaid, so we need to sell this house and document everything and get it done reasonably quick. Again, something that's pretty common, right? Um, there are rules and regulations surrounding that. However, going on Medicaid, selling a piece of real estate, um, kind of making sure and figuring out what all the assets are from Medicaid standpoint, all kind of normal stuff. Uh, the POA, again, also normal stuff. And then he proceeds to tell me that it doesn't really need to go on the market. I'm like, well, what do you mean? He's like, well, it kind of needs to go on the market, but we're not going to show it to anyone because I'm living in the house. So I'm like, uh, what do you mean? <laughs> um, so how do we sell it? He said, well, I'm going to buy it. <laughs> Okay, so let me get this straight. It's in a neighborhood, I think, where the homes were give or take around $200,000. He said he wants to buy it for about $120,000 as part of this process. So I'm like, okay, let me get this straight. You want to put it on the market, but not show it. You want to buy the house, so you want to sign a contract as a buyer and then also sign as power of attorney for your mother and then we're going to document all this and we're going to give it over to medicaid and he said yeah i'm like wait time out man um i don't totally understand that uh smelled a little fishy let me look into that a little bit so i looked into it and i actually checked with our broker I also checked with an attorney I know, uh, and my hunches were correct. This has got like, I don't want to call it scam written all over it. Maybe he didn't know any better, but the whole thing just smelled fishy and I certainly did not want to get involved with it. I advised the referring real estate, uh, referral service that I got that um, client from about this situation that it's just not something that we should get involved in and them too um, from, for legal reasons. And basically, you know, their greed, because I can't really come up with any other term for how they were feeling uh, or how they reacted, their greed was no problem. We'll just find another agent to take care of that. Wow. So uh, moral of the story here is always ask questions no transaction is worth losing your license over, right? Uh, again, Robert Greenblatt, thank you for tuning in to another, another episode of Real Estate Stories. Again, please hit the subscribe button wherever it is and uh, hit that like button. I appreciate it very much.